Nancy will be up here in just a minute to give some announcements, but I, I just want to tell you how um, God is really, really doing some things in these days. She talked about it earlier, but um, we are, uh, in, the, in the last couple of weeks, how many people have come in with a greater expectation for what God is going to do once you get here? Okay, that's, that's the key to breakthrough, is expectation. If you will ramp up your expectation and desire before you come to church, watch what God will do once you get to church. It, it's, it's a whole different environment to start leading in worship when you've got a people who are hungry in anticipation already expecting God to show up. It, it's a completely different deal than, than having to try to bring a people who have been um, um, drawn away by tons of different things and not to say that any of it's bad. It's just that it's not God, you know. Well, it could be, but many times we get distracted is what I'm saying. And so if we'll come into services with our hearts already, already in place, we, we, can, we can accelerate what he's trying to accomplish in us because we're in a place where we can receive. And so I, I just want to say that not as an encouragement. Spend some time this week and just begin to just push into the presence of God. These corporate times of worship, there, there are things that happen corporately that can't happen any other place in, in, the, in the body of life. God called us together. This whole thing called the church is his idea. Corporate gatherings were his idea. And so when we gather, we gather around his presence, and we gather around his throne, and there's a mixture of the anointings and the giftings and talents that are on each other's lives, and we need that in each other's lives. And whenever we begin to lift up our own unique voice of praise, it begins to create a tapestry of his grace and love through the whole body and through the whole house. And we all get to be participants of each other's anointing and graces on each other's lives. The grace that you're, is on your life, I need in my life. Because you carry a unique piece of the kingdom. That's why we're called the body. And each part of the body complements the other parts. And so I really want to encourage you. God is up to something. It feels like a great awakening in our church and in the region, honestly, with what I feel. What I feel in this house right now is what we felt when we felt in the great outpourings in Pensacola Revival and in, 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 up in Toronto and in various places where we've been where God was moving. And it just blew out and began to create and shift an atmosphere for the whole region. <laughs> And it, it really does, it feels that significant. And so we're trying to be obedient to what the Lord wants to do here in this place because we just want to be obedient to have him do his thing and his way. And so just come expecting, come desiring, come hungry, come ready to receive an impartation of what he wants to give because this is an hour and a day of equipping for the Lord and for the saints. Yeah. Look at your neighbor and say, playtime is over. <laughs> One of, one of my good friends, he used to put it this way. He, he, he said, the day of the weenie Christian is over. <laughs> yeah, playtime is over. It, you know, you know I, I, love, I love when Bobby Connor was here. He says, he says, you know what, I never like scrimmage. He said, I always like game day. He said, because game day is worth everything became real. And I'm telling you, this is the hour where we're, we're not in rehearsal. We're not in scrimmage. This is game time. And it's like the Lord is in the spirit of the Lord is moving sovereignly upon us. He's moving all over the earth. But there's something very, very unique about what's going on in our house at this time and in this moment. And if we'll be careful just to steward it and to lean into it, it will only grow and it will only grow, grow in grace and in, in power. The thing that I, I really am, am heartfelt hungry for is that we don't come to a place where we, where we have to get into performance for, for next week to be bigger or better than last week. You know, that's a surefire recipe to frustration and just, just, just burnout, honestly. Because we don't have to sustain this. His fire is completely able to sustain. What he began, he'll complete. Okay? And what he started in you, he'll complete in you. And so this is an hour just to be awakened, to be called alive. He's calling our spirits alive in Jesus' name. And so we declare over you that you're alive, fully alive in Jesus Christ here in this season, in this time. Put your hand over your heart and say, I'm fully alive. I'm fully alive in Jesus Christ. Yeah. And so we're going to steward that by just hungering for more. We're not going to try to manipulate or to try to, to, to hype up. or We're just going to lean into the Father and let him come. And we're going to worship him and adore him until he comes. And that's the key to breakthrough. Watch what begins happening in your life. 
Some of you already, just for being in this atmosphere for the last couple of Sundays, your whole environments are changing in your workplaces and in your homes. How, how many can testify that some things are shifting? <laughs> yep. Why? Because when you stand in his presence, you, remain, you can't remain the same. You are absolutely changed by his presence and glory. So when you step into the marketplace, when you step into your house, people are affected by the thing that's in you, inside of you. Tony, come up here and tell me about a little bit about what's going on. We talked a little bit in the hall, and, and God's doing some powerful stuff in you, and I want some people to hear what, what happened, because you were talking about this very thing about what's going on inside of you is starting to rub off. So this is Tony. Hello. Thank you. Uh, so I'm a 15-year-old Christian. My wife and I are new here, and we come out of a, a religious culture. Um, into something very different. <laughs> uh, I came here with a desire to get the Father's love flowing out of me. I noticed that that was missing before. Um, signs and wonders, they were there, but the love was not there. And uh, because of fire starters, um, we've been getting positioned for that. And... Uh, and so we, we climbed up in the father's lap last week and, and a flip, a switch flipped and my environment changed. Um, it's been incredible. People have been coming up to me and asking my name and just being drawn to me and I can go on and on. It's been incredible. Something's changed and w something that's... Uh, Mark said, because, uh, you know, how do I get from that old mindset to this new value of myself? How do I get there? And he said it was a process. I'm like, ah, I don't know. Yeah, okay, I agree, but there's got to be more. I need something more immediate. And he said, well, it's a leap of faith, and I needed to hear that. A leap of faith I can do. And that's the light switch for me. I took that leap. And it was a chasm, a big canyon between the mindset I had and the, and the mindset I have now, the value. And it's a leap of faith. And so if you hear anything, take a leap of faith and believe that God has stamped you with a value. And when you realize that and walk in that, everything opens, everything changes. Amen. Yeah, thank you, Tony. That's, that's really, really wonderful. It really is. And, and, and it's just the truth. You become saturated with his presence, and you become attractab attracted, attractable. Attractive. I become attractive. I don't know anything about English or the English language, but I do know that I'm magnetic. It's the truth. Yeah, yeah, God gets on you and people like you. Isn't that amazing? Some of them won't, but that's because they're still wrestling with who they are and who God is. And, and, but, but hey, that's even fun, you know, when, when, uh, when things get riled up because of who God is inside of you. So we're just, we're just really, really honored that you would choose to be here and honored that you're on the journey. And I just really want to encourage you, don't hold back. Step into more. Take what Tony did, that leap of faith that will allow you to just step in to, to just say, I don't know what this looks like. God's looking for people who are like all in, you know? You know, th this whole thing is sticking a toe in and finding out whether the water's going to be suitable for you. Just, just get over it and just jump in, you know? And uh, just get submersed in his spirit, in the river of his spirit and his love. So, Nance, why don't you come and tell us a little bit about what's going on. We'll get some things happening, so that'd be great. All right. <laughs> Why don't we do this? Why don't we let our ushers come, and we'll just let... Oops, sorry, I'm ringing. Um, we'll just let you guys give while we're catching you up on some announcements, and just keep worship going that way, right? Yeah? Let's pray. Oh. Hello. Oh, okay. Are you going to pray? Okay. <laughs> were you trying to be God? <laughs> Hi. Hello. Shall we have a conversation? You be God. I'll be me. No. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. If you're religious, we've offended you, but hey, you, yeah, okay. All right. 
Get your panties out of a bunch and move on. Yeah, all right. And now I've offended you again, but you know. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Lord, we're just so thankful to be with you. We're so thankful that you are not uptight. Gosh, that's a good day to figure that out. You're just not uptight. Man, you're not irreverent, but you're not uptight. And you're just loving and you're fun. And we're just so thankful to be with you and to be with each other and to be on this journey together. <laughs> to have each other, to uh, encourage each other and challenge each other and love each other. And Lord, today uh, we're just going to take just a moment right now and just uh, financially support what you're doing in this valley and beyond this valley and in, in the world, God. So um, we just thank you because we know that anything we give back to you right now came from you in the first place. So it's really just one big circle. But you leave it up to us whether or not we keep the circle going. And so we just, this is our chance and this is our joy. And we, we really, we really like partnering with you. And uh, we just, we're thankful because we can never outdo you. It doesn't matter how hard we try. It doesn't matter how much we give. We're never going to outdo you. You always give more. So um, we're just thankful. And we just bless you. And we give joyfully and hilariously. And we just pray your favor and your blessing upon it. And I just pray even more favor and blessing on your people, God. Just blow them out of the water. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 All right. Okay. So let me just catch you up on some things that are coming up. Sunday, September 6th, uh, we have Pastors Justice and Margaret Ochuro from Bungoma, Kenya. They, they were going to be with us uh, today, and they had another uh, opportunity come up that was fit better in their schedule. So it's totally good. We're flexible. So September 6th, uh, make sure you put that on your calendar. They are very, very dear friends of ours. We, Shannon and I have been there uh, multiple times, and we've taken a team there, and they're just awesome. I mean, if you ever want to, I love to partner with people who are changing culture. You know, I, I, I'm glad to give to the needy. I, I, that's fine, but I'd really like for the change the culture so there is no more neediness. And, and that's Justice and Margaret. They, they and their church are changing the culture of Bungoma. And I, I love that about them. They're just huge dreamers, and then they go after it. They don't just dream and sit and think, oh, I can't do this because I live in Africa. No, you just tell them they can't do something. They'll look at you and go, what are you thinking? And they just do it. They just find a way to do it. Margaret, I love Margaret. One time we were, we were talking, and Margaret said, oh, well, now that I know about, the, because they, they have very limited, uh, I think we are talking about farm tools, right? Until a year or two ago. They didn't even know what, what a um, corn shucker was. You guys know what a corn shucker is, don't you? We're not that far west, are we? I mean, I'm from the Midwest, so. Yeah, so they didn't know what a corn shucker was. They were shucking corn by hand, one row at a time. And then they didn't know what a combine was. And, what, and so, like, it was like when we showed them YouTubes of what they were, they were just amazed and Margaret said I love this I have always held this in my heart since she said it she said oh I said now we just need to get you one she goes oh yes well but we will because if the Lord if the Lord showed us that that means he wants us to have it they already have the corn shucker and it's electric and it now we're just working on the combine so they're awesome so make sure you're here okay and then um Saturday, Friday, September 11th, and Saturday the 12th, we have our School of Deliverance. Um, you can sign up for that out in the lobby. Um, just a great school. You know, I, there's a lot of ignorance about uh, demons. There's a lot of ignorance about angels. There's a lot of ignorance about deliverance. And our role in that, what do we do? What do we not do? What, what is that? Is that a demon or just a bad attitude? Sometimes they're pretty close. So anyway, um, it's a, I will. It's a great school. So if you want to be part of that, then um, you can come. And then um, Sunday, September 13th, at 4 o'clock, we have our DNA class. DNA is our Who Are You People class. So if you're new, fairly new, or maybe you've just been here for a while and you have an entire list of questions you would love to ask by now, um, you're welcome to do that. So that's DNA, Sunday, September 13th at 4 o'clock. Shan does that. 
and it's just a real laid back question and answer time find out who we are what do we do in here what do we believe what do we feel like our purpose is here where do you fit in is there a place for you here um, all of that if you want to be part of a ministry team um, we do require DNA before you are part of a ministry team just because we like everybody on the same page you know I hate it when somebody wants me to do a job and then all of a sudden they come to me and say oh I'm sorry that's not how we do that and it's like well could you have told me that before I did this so that's DNA you know it's like just teaching our core values and all that so it's a great it's a great 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 time and so that so just sign up for that out there there's no fee there's no cost for that um, but we do need to know how many people because we have um, literature that we like to give you just you know some papers that have our beliefs and stuff on them so um, if you'll sign up for that that'll be great and then one more and then I'm gonna dismiss the kids I have not forgotten this is a hot off the press uh, quite a ways off but I'll tell you now M May 13 14 and 15 I have just um, solidified that we're having a women's conference. We're going to have Miranda Nelson. Come on. Heather Ferrante. Miranda Nelson's from Pasadena. I don't know if you've ever seen uh, Jeremy and Miranda Nelson. They've been with us, but uh, just awesome. They're like all over the world, so you've got to catch her. But we caught her in May. And, so, and then Heather Ferrante is a very dear friend of ours from Vacaville, California. These women are just, they're awesome. You will... You can't help but adore them, for one thing. And then they just have huge prophetic gifts, and they're just powerhouses. So that's going to be May 13th, 14th. And then Miranda's going to stay with us on the 15th. And I hope Heather will stay, too. Um, but Miranda's going to stay and preach for us on Sunday morning, the 15th. So I just kind of wanted to give you a save the date idea. So we'll get more to you on that. Uh, we don't even have a Coolio name yet, but we'll figure one out. So, all right. <laughs> all right um why don't we let our kids go to kids ministry so kindergarten through fifth you're right across the cafe in our kids room and then we have preschool downstairs and to the right and then nursery is actually available the whole service and just in case you didn't know that it's downstairs to the left so i think that's it see if this works hello there we go Yeah, if, if you uh, got a visitor's card, we'd really like you to fill it out and turn that in as well. If you turn it into the cafe, it'll get you some treats and goodies in there and free drinks and all that, so that'll help. Um, we did have one other save the date, and that's um, February 12, 13, and 14 yeah, of 2016. Yeah. Bobby Connor's coming back. Woo! So we are, we are just incredibly blessed to be hosting a lot of just world changers, and it's just a, a wonderful, wonderful thing. So I'll give this to you as well. And um, let me see if I can make this read. I've got to blow it up so I can see it. That'll help. So, yeah. Oh, my. <coughs> yeah, if you'll pull some. Yeah, he's working on it. He's going to get me all straightened out so I don't feel like I'm sitting in a tin can. But, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I wanted to just push into some more stuff and then we'll, we'll wrap some things up and pray today. But um, I, again, revolving around kind of the theme of where we've been, we, we've been talking about we need the Holy Spirit and we need God in us and He is in you. And we've been see, preaching on um, let heaven come and what does it look like when heaven comes and um, realizing that we have been seated with Christ in heavenly places already. So therefore we can... Um, from a position of heaven begin to speak to the earth for heaven to come to earth because we <laughs> I like technology so yeah we were getting it ironed out he's back there tweaking stuff he's got little graphs and little things and it's pretty neat so yeah yeah Bobby gets into just about any environment that he's at and, and microphones literally blow up underneath the anointing of God so yeah it's a uh, he pointed at a light fixture one time and it blew up. He just pointed at it and it blew up. So, yeah, that was pretty exciting. So, anyway, now I can't see the screen because I look directly at the light. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, speaking of technology and stuff in, in uh, Africa and what those folks are doing with it, um, I, I hit a, a great sale yesterday and bought a welder for Africa. And uh, Johnny can appreciate that because he's a welder. But uh, I was t talking to Justice and Margaret the other, a few weeks ago, and I said, 
I feel like we're supposed to come and, and figure out how to get a blowing system on your church because you go in their church. If you think our church is hot, you need to go to Africa is all I'm telling you because it is hot and a big old tin roof with no insulation. And I said, I feel like we're supposed to, to do um, um, a ventilation system in your church. And so um, we're going to do that. And so we're going to be asking you to help us here sometime really, really close, close because I just booked the tickets yesterday to go to Africa in October. And um, Caleb is going to go with me and help me put in that, that system. So I'm really excited. And um, so it's really, really good. I don't know what I'm doing. Ashley is going to be leaving today, tomorrow, sometime. When are you leaving? Wednesday. Ashley's moving to Redding, California. And... Uh, yeah. Matt's going to be leaving to Reading in a week from Wednesday. A week from this Wednesday. Yeah. So we'll say goodbye to you next week. Yeah. We, we don't want to rush it for you because we're going to hold on to you as long as we can. Okay. But with Ashley, Ashley, just come up here for a minute. We want to bless you and pray over you. Ask the Lord to just do amazing things over you. She, she went off to Reading a few years ago, went to their school of ministry and, uh, um, she just came to us a few months ago, and she says, I really feel like the Lord wants me to go back and hang out there for a while. And so um, that's what she's doing. Pretty good deal, huh? Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, it's a pretty good place to hang out. It's great for them. It's not so good for us. But Ashley, we love you, and we bless you, and we just declare the Lord over your life to, to guard your steps and to give you direction to and from. And he'll just give you um, a real grace and mercy to know um, how and when to move. I, I really feel like that the Lord's wanting to do with you is just that anointing that rested on the sons of Issachar so that you can um, pick up a, an ability to discern, to know the times and seasons, and uh, particularly for your own life, that he's going to really give you clarion call for times and seasons, knowing um, how he's moving in you and then how to move with what he's given you. So we release that anointing over your life and, and real peace and grace over your life. So blessings on you. We love you. Amen. Yeah. Good to see you. Yeah. <laughs> And, and so um, back to what I was talking about earlier we, we've been pushing into let heaven come to earth and we need heaven on earth because everything changes on earth when we have heaven you know there's, there's no cancer in heaven there's no poverty in heaven there's no in, un, injustice in heaven there's, when, when heaven invades an atmosphere everything changes and that's what Jesus came to demonstrate Jesus walked the earth as a person he was fully God but he came fully man remember that? So when he comes, he empties himself to become like a man, just like you and I. And he did it so that he can demonstrate what it would be like for one person, one man, to walk the earth completely dependent upon the power of the Holy Spirit and yet without sin. And so he came to demonstrate what an overcomer's life was like. He came to demonstrate what it would be like to walk under the anointing and power and authority of God, ha having that flow as it would be into a man, not appropriated as God released on earth. Does that make sense? Everybody with me? In, in, in other words, he did. He emptied himself to become just like you and I are. So when, when, when he struggles with temptation, he doesn't struggle with it as God. He struggles with it as a man dependent upon the Holy Spirit to, to help him through that issue and that problem. First time I ever heard that the theologically, I thought that, that, that somebody was pre preaching fallacy. But if you read this, the account of the scriptures, you're absolutely going to find that that's what he did. When, when, when he's victorious over sin, he's not victorious over sin because he's God. He's victorious over sin because he's leaning into the Father and he's hearing the Spirit's voice. And he leaves us an example so that you and I can be victorious. Otherwise, we'll just come up with a doctrine and theology that says, well, Jesus was that way because he was God, but I certainly can't measure up to his stature or his nature, so I'll just exempt myself from having to be perfect. And we know that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, but because of the surpassing work of Jesus Christ, every single one of us now have the, the ability to walk in victory. And so if we don't view things properly, we'll adopt a theology that allows us to continue as sinners saved by grace rather than saints saved out of sin. We once were sinners, but now we're saints. It's a whole new classification. And now we're victorious. And so now when we sin, it should be the exception, not the rule. Or the place to look for a place for, for a failure. You know, it's like, man, I just can't help it. It's just what, what's in front of me. So I'm going to, well, that's, that's, just, that's just weak living. We, we've just relegated ourselves down to the least common denominator to say God's grace will cover. And he does. 
But that isn't where he wants to keep you. He wants to elevate you, lift up your eyes higher. And that's what happens when we allow heaven to come to earth inside of us. One of the things I wanted to visit with today, honestly, about that whole issue of letting heaven come to earth is the whole issue of having a relationship with heaven that can be manifest upon the earth. And so I, 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 I cry and pray out right now that we would learn to cooperate with what heaven's saying and what heaven's doing. Jesus said it this way. He says, I only do what I see my father doing. I only say what I hear him saying. And so he was constantly in tune with the father's voice to be able to release what God was saying, what God was doing on the earth. And, if, and that's honestly what you and I have been pushing into in these last several weeks. We're coming in and we're coming into alignment. It's like we're being tuned to the frequencies of heaven. And once we become tuned to God's frequencies, we begin to resonate with his glory. Kind of like this ringing in my headset. <laughs> Not like that. But. Bobby prophesied this, that over the next several years, we're going to see more revealed over frequency and sound on the earth than we've ever, ever realized. Science is going to, going to release more stuff about frequency on the earth than we've ever realized. There's, there's a lot going on. I'm not going to step into a Brian Orm state of mind right now because I'm not sharp enough or, or well-educated enough to go there. But I do know a few things about sound. And one of the things is, is that when sound comes into a place and begins to resonate on, onto a, a, a group of people or onto an instrument, it's looking for a place of sympathetic resonance. So that if I begin to sing a G note and, and I sing a G note every G note in this whole room is going to start resonating. If there's a G string on a guitar, when I sing a G note, that string is going to start vibrating sympathetically. Why? Because it's coming to agreement with what is being said. And that's what God is doing when he speaks over the waters of the earth. When he speaks over the earth, he's looking for a place of resonance. And if you're a person who's tuned to him, then you will start resonating and vibrating his sound and his frequency. So that you begin becoming a demonstration of that because you're just simply manifesting what heaven is saying. See, I don't, I don't even know what I'm doing. I, I, I just know that God showed up. And that's exactly, it, it's that simple. God begins to speak, and if you're a person who's in tune with his resonant frequency, in other words, you positioned your heart to say, I'm open to hear what God says, then all of a sudden you're like a tuning fork that just comes alive. And then you begin to resonate out the sound of God. And that's what's happening in these last several weeks as we've gathered together to worship him. Your hearts are coming into alignment with the presence of God and with the sound of heaven. Amen. And that's why things are shifting in your lives and shifting in your homes. And the more that you'll step into a place to desire him, the more you'll find out that he is going to resonate in you. You were designed to be carriers of his presence and carriers of his glory. Your earthly representation of the kingdom and of the son that he loves. You are. And, I, and so I was thinking this week about how, how we shift environments and all those things. And, and one of the most overlooked aspects, Bobby was here and, teach, and taught a school on this um, a, a few years ago on, on angels. Was how many people were a part of that school who were here? J yeah, just a handful of you. That's, why, that's what I thought, honestly. And so I wanted to talk about it today. And if, if you... If you need more information, he's got a great book on, on the assignment of angels, both elect and evil, and how all of that is, is a, a great benefit to the, to, to the church. But um, in, in many circles and in, through most respects, the church has ignored two created order beings, and one would be the angels, and then the other would be fallen angels or demons. And we've, we've, we, we've either erred on the side, both, both sides of the pendulum, to, to ignore them and say that they don't exist at all or to overemphasize them and have too much attention, particularly on the demonic side. I've seen a lot of ministries that begin to focus exclusively on demonic warfare. And usually most of those churches or most of the people that I see that's focused tremendously in that vein end up usually really, really unbalanced and usually very frantic. <laughs> and very worked up. And God didn't call us to be worked up, he called us to walk in peace and rest in joy. Now, so we don't ignore the demonic realm, but we shouldn't give it too much attention either. Because last time I checked, he is a defeated foe. I, I think that, that, that um, who was it that Brian said, he's, he's, he's been disarmed and he's defeated. That means he has no arms and he has no feet, <laughs> you know? So, so we don't, we shouldn't have to worry about some little guy that's walking around, you know, I have no arms and I have no feet, you know. What he has is a big mouth and a big voice. 
And so he speaks out loudly and he begins to, to propagate lies and propagate uh, schemes of the enemy. And so he begins to just articulate as much as he can to try and, try and to look for a place of agreement. Remember there was sympathetic agreement from the voice of heaven? If we begin to resonate with what heaven is saying, we'll stand into alignment, we'll stand into authority, we'll stand into a place where heaven begins to resonate through us. If you start believing the demonic lies, you're going to start resonating with an antichrist spirit. Oh, even lies as simple as you're ugly. That's an antichrist spirit because you weren't made ugly. You were made fearfully and wonderfully made. Step into an agreement that you're depressed and that you're never going to come out of depression. It's an antichrist spirit. Come straight from the pit of hell. Step into a place of any agreement with a demonic lie and you'll stand into resonance. You begin to resonate with the frequencies of hell. Starts making a little more sense when you put it in those perspectives, doesn't it? So then you wonder why you're not attractive and why people don't want to be around you. Because you sound like hell. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I won't even go into it. I was thinking about the song that was sung in your daddy's church that one time. Yeah, yeah. We'll move on. It's irrelevant. <laughs> My wife is saying, move along, move along. <laughs> Up here, somebody lift the bar a little higher. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, my wife says we're on the internet and somebody will sound bite it and it won't come out right. So she's probably right. So, anyway. But it is the truth, isn't it? I mean, when we begin to resonate with what the enemy is saying, we begin to resonate with his spirit and with what he is trying to propagate. And that's why it's very, very important. As a man thinks, so he is. And so we need to step into alignment with what heaven is doing and what heaven is saying. And um, pay attention to that. And, and so as we begin to, to look at how the kingdom is going to move out upon the earth, I think one of the things that we, we can't ignore is the moving of angels that need to be working us alongside of us in tandem with what we're doing. There's, there's been just a, a lot of wonderful, wonderful encounters that I've had, but I've, I've read of so many, 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 many more that, that just absolutely wreck me every time I read them. I, I began reading um, several years ago about the, the story and the biography of William Branham, for instance, and William Branham had an angel of the Lord that, that first came to him when he was a little boy, and told him of the destiny that he would have when he got saved and, and told him to keep his life straight, to keep his life clean. And the angel of the Lord told him that God has a very special plan for your life. Don't mess your life up. Keep, keep focused. And all the days of his life, he, he, he kept that promise to the Lord. And he didn't run off and do a lot of the things that other kids were doing in his age. But, but this angel of the Lord was with him all the time. And uh, he would come down into his meetings while he was in meetings in all over the nations. And the angel of the Lord would come down and hover over the different people in the, the and there were, there were several different angels, but one, one would hover over people, another one stood by his side. And um, many people who had a seer's gift, like this guy right here, he, she, she, he would begin to, to say that they would see an angel of the Lord standing up beside him with his hands cupped in, in William Branham's head. And he would speak the oracles of God, and William Branham would just declare out what he was hearing. And William Branham would say to himself, there's an angel of the Lord standing by my right side, and he's telling me what's going on. But many people witnessed that and said, yes, we see that angel. And so angels have, have been powerfully used. If you look historically through the Old Testament and New Testament alike, angels of the living God have been used powerfully in the lives of, of, of the believers of God in, in a, in a pre-cross, pre-Christ era and in a post-cross era in, in the New Testament era. There's always been a, a, a realm of the angelic being released upon the earth to be helpers sent forth from God. We'll talk about some more stories, but just to get you guys on the same page, here's what Psalm 91 verse 11 through 16 says about angels. For he, speaking of the Lord, I think this is in the New King James or the NIV. I think it's NIV. For he will command his angels concerning you. Concerning who? Me. Yeah, personalize this thing for you today. He will command his angels concerning me to guard me in all my ways. Yep. They will lift you up with their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and cobra. You will trample on the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him and I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call on me and I will answer him, and I will be with him in trouble, and I will deliver him and honor him, and with long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. For I will command his angels concerning you. In, in Hebrews... Um, Chapter 1, beginning in verse, verse 1, here's what it says as well. 
in the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways, but in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things, and through whom also he made the universe. The Son is the radiance of God's glory, the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word, that he may provide purification for sins. So he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. So he became as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is superior to theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, You are my son, today I have become your father? Or again, I will be his father, and he will be my son. And again, when God brings his firstborn into the world, he says, let all God's angels worship him. In speaking of the angels, he said, he makes his angels spirits and his servants flames of fire. But about the son, he says, your throne, O God, will last forever and ever a scepter of justice will be a scepter of your kingdom, and you have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has set you above all your companions by anointing you with the oil of joy. So he also says, in the beginning, the Lord, you laid the foundations of the earth and the heavens of the, the work of, of your hands. They will perish, but you will remain. They will all wear out like a garment. You will roll them up like a robe, but the garment they will be changed, but like a garment they will be changed, but you will remain the same. And, and your years will never end. To which of the angels did God ever say, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet? And here's, here's what he says. He says, are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation? Are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation? Who are those that are going to inherit salvation? That's you and I. So what is the role according to Scripture and according to what Paul is saying through, through the theology of, of this passage? What is the role of angels in the New Testament world or in our lives today? To serve. And to serve those who inherit salvation. And so, again, there's, there needs to be a balance because so many people in, in recent days, if you came out of a New Age environment, everybody ran after angels. <laughs> and, and there was an imbalance where people began to worship angels. And we'll look in a moment in, in Revelation where the, the Lord says that that's not even permissible. But here's the, the, the good news. Whenever you have an angel of the living God, an angel won't even allow it. They won't detract from the glory that belongs to Jesus, the Son, and Him only. And so um, if you ever get tired up with the Spirit and, and it says, come worship me, that's not an angel of the living God. You better, you better do something different about that. Do you know what I'm saying? And so, um, but, but that's the point. Are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who inherit salvation? So after I read through a lot of the, the, the works and the writings of William Branham, and then we, we went on multiple trips with, with uh, Randy Clark into Brazil and Sao Paulo and all, all over the world, what we began to discover, and this is one thing that Randy pointed out in many of his teachings and his healing schools, is that when they began to invite the angelic realm into the room, when they began doing healing services or any service where God was in the room, they would simply say, angels of the living God, come and minister your love and minister the Father's love and minister healing and, and do the work of the Father in our midst. And every time that they began to give an invitation of those angels to come, he said there was a marked increase in the anointing breakthrough for healing miracles that took place in those rooms. I would say that it would be incumbent upon us to, to, to start making some declarations and giving some direction to the angelic realm so that they can partner with what it is that the Lord wants to do. They are looking for direction to serve underneath the anointing that God has placed on your life. Now, this baffles me, honestly, because angels have, have never been able... To, to, to those who are, who are righteous angels. There was a fallen group. Remember when, when Adam sinned and all of that stuff and the fall of man and, and, and Lucifer was cast down from, from, from heaven into Hades and into the earth? When that happened, the singular punishment for rebellion one time for Lucifer and everyone who chose to follow Lucifer was exile from the kingdom. They never were given a chance to repent. It was, you're done, you're out. Even now today, angels live in a perfect realm, in a perfect unity with the Father, and they live a sinless life. They don't, they don't have a choice. Of, they have a choice, but if they rebel, they don't have the ability to repent and to, to walk through the grace that we have because of the blood of Jesus Christ that was given to us and the sacrifice of his grace. And so when we see angels, um, they're, they're pretty baffled, honestly, by the grace that's been given to you. I, 
they, they peer into our world and they peer into what we've been given and honestly it really does baffle them that, that they can see people who handle so loosely the grace and the mercy of God and because they were never given that opportunity and never given that chance and, and so um, I, I'll tell you one, one story real, real fast we've got a lot of people some of the people who've been here for a long time with us you've heard my, my stories over and over you're just going to have to put up with me again so but, but I, I do remember I was going through a season it was pretty ugly and uh, Nancy was certainly tired of me because I was, I was in a, just a really incredibly dark place of depression We'd, we hadn't been pastoring here very long I, I, I think for three or four years and we, we were in a place I was in a place where it was just really tough for me there was a, a feeling of a lot of rejection a lot of stuff going on in the church and a lot of things happening and for me it just really became a dark place and so I, I was not getting out of it and uh, I remember waking up in the middle of the night um, with an angelic encounter and um, I woke up out of a dark sleep in, in the middle of the morning about 2 a.m. 2 and there were two angels at the foot of my bed and they were large. I mean, they were very, very large. Their, their heads were almost touching the ceiling and they were broad and they were like warrior soldier angels and, and, just, just, and they were just chiseled features and they were... Um, um, really really muscle muscular and just very toned and very fit and and i wake up and it just scared the fire out of me i'm telling you i just i was just just terrified when i woke up and there they are right in the middle of my room and 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 they're having a conversation back and forth to one another and it didn't take me long to figure out that they were having the conversation about me how many like to walk into a room where somebody's talking about you it, it feels real good, you know? And it's, it's even more, you know, daunting when you've got two angels who take time to show up in your room and they're having the conversation about you. And it didn't take me long to also figure out that it wasn't a good conversation. Because one of them's just kind of sitting there nodding, yeah, and he's got this stern look. But the other one over here, he's ticked off, and he's just like going. And then he'd look back at me. And then he'd talk some more, and then he'd look back at me. And I knew, oh, no, I'm in big trouble. And... Uh, and so finally, after several moments of that, I, I, I just had the nerve to say, can, can I help you? And I said, I said what? And, and, and he spun around and pointed his finger right at me. He says, we just don't get it. And I said, what don't you get? He said, we don't get, as angels, we don't get how you humans can be given so much and do so little with it. And it was just like, Phew. Oh. And then in the next moment, I was caught up with another encounter with Chris Valentin. I don't know why, but Chris showed up as the Holy Spirit. And so in my, now I'm, now I'm in a dream. I mean, I'm literally in a, it's a vision. And in this vision, I'm caught up in this thing, and I'm, I'm laid over the top of a school desk. Well, trust me, anytime you're in a vision, you're laid over the top of a school desk, you're about to go to school. <laughs> okay? So there I am laid over the top of a school desk, and I got my head down, and I'm just, I'm just gloom and despair, agony. I'm just weeping and wailing and all that stuff in this, in this vision. And then all of a sudden, like in, in between my legs, Chris Valentin comes wiggling his way right up in between me. So he's like on his back, and he's shimmying himself up in between my legs. And so I'm looking over the top, and there's Chris. And I'm thinking to myself, what in the world is going on, Chris? And then all of a sudden, Chris just looks at me sternly. He says, all right. You've got 24 hours to get over this. And then, boom, I was out of the vision. Okay, we don't get it. We don't get how you humans can be given so much and do so little with it. You've got 24 hours to get over this. My wife was wishing that encounter would have happened probably about six months, six months before that. <laughs> but I knew. I knew that I knew that I knew that this was serious, and I had to step out of that, that place of, of gloom and despair and take control over what the Lord was saying to me. Because... And, and, and that, but that's, it, it's an illustration that shows perfectly well that angels are active among us and they don't get us. <laughs> they, they peer into the grace that we have and, and they, they, they long for the day when, when, when they could have been shown that grace, but they weren't. It was a swift act of judgment that came against those who rebelled against God. And so those who toe the mark and toe the line, they carry it very justly and they carry it very righteously and they carry it with a very strong, um, holy indignation, if you will. And so when they see people like us who, who, care, who carelessly handle the grace and mercy of God, it's a bit offensive to them, honestly. Not just a bit, a whole lot offensive to them. Because they understand what it costs for them to walk in purity and to walk in love. 
And they say every bit of grace has been extended to you as humans to walk in mercy and love, and yet you choose to handle it and misappropriate it and handle it so poorly. And so I, I think that it would just really be an encouragement for us to, to, to be reminded of the sacrifice that they pay every single day to walk in that kind of relationship with God and to know that we can and, and that honestly that they've been given the privilege and the right to be able to be ministering spirits for you and I. I believe in, in, the, in the kingdom of heaven and in the kingdom of darkness that there is an assignment of the angelic realm over our lives. That I believe that, that the, the desire of the enemy, if, if he could, would be to attach a demonic spirit to every single one of you in this room. He, he has plans, he has schemes, he has desires, and he would attach a spirit. And, and, and in many family lines, we see that happening through, through generational spirits that traffic through a familiar family spirit from one generation to the next. But in many respects, um, what we have to understand, or not in many respects, what we need to equally understand is that there's an assignment of, of the angelic realm of heaven over your life. And particularly when you step into the will and the nature and the purpose of God, angels of the Lord are at your disposal. They've been given to you to help you. They have been sent by God to help you. And so if we ignore them, they're going to be pretty bored. And I just think that we need to step into a place where we, we, we determine in our lives that we're not going to have any bored angels hanging around us. Now, that doesn't mean that you're out doing careless, stupid things like driving 100,000 miles an hour down the road looking for, you know, that, you know they, they will protect you from that too, but that's just, you know, yeah, that's just stupidity. But there you go. But, but they are, they're looking for a place to, to help you, and, and honestly, they're looking for a, a community between heaven and earth, and, and though we don't worship angels, we need to be in cooperation to recognize their presence and to be able to recognize that God has them available to us. First time I ever had an angelic encounter, I was sitting in, in a service in Springfield, Missouri, and um, it was just like this environment right now where we, we had worship going on, and I was down in the front, and I just had my hands lifted, and all of a sudden, I feel this big, warm hand come right down around and wrap around my neck. And I thought, oh, man, that feels good. <laughs> that feels wonderful. Oh, somebody's praying for me. Thank you, Jesus. And so I turned around to find out who was praying for me, and there wasn't anybody there praying for me that I could see with my natural eye. There was an angelic helper praying for me. But as soon as he laid his hand on the back of my neck, it felt like liquid love just poured all over me and the oil of, of goodness and joy and gladness. And, and I just sat there and said, oh, I don't understand it, but I thank you for it. I don't, I don't understand what this all looks like, but I thank you for it. And so that began a journey for, for us as a family. And, and then um, a, a few years later, we moved out to, to Utah and we, we ran into every kind of spiritual force of wickedness and powers and everything you can imagine. But one of the things that we did was have intercession on, on Monday, Monday nights, I think it was, Tuesday nights, and we'd lay in the altar, and, and there was like, there was two, two different services for prayer and intercession. There was the service that everybody came to, and then there was the one that everybody stayed for. Because of about nine or 10 o'clock at night, um, a lot of people would start drifting out, and then the Holy Spirit would really begin to show up, and we'd sit in there. I remember I used to get my wife so ticked off at me because I wouldn't, I'd be laying down there on the floor just soaking in God's presence, and it's three in the morning, and she's frantically wondering where I'm at, and I'm, I'm dead to the world. No cell phone, just, just laying there in the glory. So she's driving from Leighton to come find out whether I've been killed or something like that. But, um, but they were glorious days apart from the frustration that I put my wife through. Um, they really were because we'd lay there in the altar and, and God would show up and he would just show up. With, and, and it was at the same time that, that um, our daughter Anna had been diagnosed with cancer. She had a tumor that came up on the side of her head that went through her bone and it was attached to her brain line. And, and it was, I'm telling you, this is the truth. It wasn't there one day and it was there the next and it was as, as long as I'll ever live, I know that it wasn't a natural born disease, but it was a spirit of affliction sent to kill her. Because the first week that we showed up, a demon spirit came into our house and said, I know why you're here and I'm going to kill you and your family. And so now we're experiencing the manifestation of that in our own home. So we were like, you know, and so it was crazy. So I'm laying down there wrestling with all of that and laying in the floor. And then, then um, I feel these two big hands come and reach and grab me. And I, I knew I was laying over in the corner by myself and it could have been somebody else, but I was, these two big hands grabbed me by the ankles and I looked up really quick and there's nobody there. And then um, he held me there for a minute. I just kind of laid there. And then all of a sudden he came up and he put his big old hand in my chest and his hand literally covered from, from here to here and his fingers wrapped around my whole rib cage. He was a big, 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 big angel. So he's, and I, I tried to get up and he just pushed me right down to the ground. And he says, no, you're not going anywhere. He didn't say that. He just pushed me. But all I can tell you is that with everything that I was going through with all the anxiety and all the fear in that moment, 
all of that began to melt away as I was being ministered to by this angel. Remember, ministering spirits sent to minister to those who will inherit salvation. And so he's just, just, he's just soaking me with God's goodness and love. There was never a detraction for me to like worship this angel. I knew that this was an angel of the Lord, and I knew who Jesus was, and, and he was sent by Jesus to help me in this time. Just the same as if you came up to the altar and needed prayer, and somebody in our prayer team reached out their hand and was used of God to minister to you. An angel of the Lord can do that as well. And so I'm being ministered. And then, so for the next uh, probably five or six weeks, this angel, that angel, uh, he, he, they're, they're not limited by space or dimension or time, so they can kind of do whatever they want to because the, the size of his hand would have indicated that he was a big boy, and yet it, the next moment, the next day, he fits inside of an S10 Chevy pickup beside me. I'm driving down the road, driving home, and, and I'm just, just minding my own business in rush hour traffic, and he reaches over and grabs me by, behind the neck, and I almost wrecked the truck. It scared me so bad. <laughs> And, 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 and I just, oh, I said, oh, thank you, Jesus. And, and he just, he, he would show up like that every single day for five weeks. And he would touch me, and he would minister God's love to me. And he just stayed with me that entire time. And it created a very, very unique relationship with me to know that angels are here to help, not to harm or not to hurt or not to scare. Now, there are times when we need to fear because they're fierce. They have authority, they have power, they have the ability to exact God's judgment. And, and we, we talk about people who, you know, we're almost living in a politically correct world now where people don't want to talk about the judgments of God, but I'm telling you the judgments of heaven are real. And God will exact judgment on nations if nations are operating out of an antichrist spirit. God's desire is to exact justice upon ISIS right now in my heart, and I believe that with everything in me. He, he hates what's happening with, with ISIS and what ISIS is. He loves people, but he hates that spirit that's driving them. Remember, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and darkness in this age. And so God is looking for, for, for justice to be exacted. And, and so don't, don't be afraid of, of, of God. He's good and he's just and he's kind and he's benevolent. But, but he does come with, with fierceness when he needs to. And, and he's, he's dealing with spiritual realms and spiritual authority. And he knows how to take care of that. And he'll use angels to do that. But So um, angels are a part of our everyday life and need to be a part of it. And you just need to be aware of what, what your situations are. And, and simply invite them. I, I remember when, when we, I made my first trip to, to the Spokane Healing Rooms. Does anybody know what that is up in, in Spokane, Washington? John G. Lake started healing rooms there. John G. Lake was a great African missionary who, who started healing rooms um, after he came back from Africa in Spokane, Washington. And they literally set it up like a doctor's office and had people just come in and receive prayer. And, and Spokane, Washington, over the next couple of years, became known as the healthiest city in all of America because people were coming to the healing rooms rather than going to the hospital. Hospitals were emptied out, and, and, and people were being healed by the thousands there in Spokane, Washington. And so in, in recent days, one of the, the deacons out of Bethel Church, Cal Pierce, really felt like the Lord wanted him to go redig that well of, of the healing rooms in, in Spokane, Washington. And so he went and, and uh, found out as much as he could decided to, to pick up and move his whole family there and restart the healing rooms, and they did that. And, and so as a result of that, they were able to rent the same geographical space. Now, the original building that John G. Lake was in had been since torn down, and a new building had gone up, and it was a multi-store building. And they found a, an open floor in this office building that was on the exact footprint of where John G. Lake had his healing rooms. So they leased it for a year. And so they get up in this, in this healing room, and they're in intercession in one of these rooms one day, and this is a crazy story, but they begin to cry out and intercede, and all of a sudden, this big angel, this warrior-like angel, steps up to the forefront and just kind of walks into the room, and he turns around to, to Cal Pierce, and he says, what took you so long? He says, what do you mean, what took us so long? He said, well, ever since the days of John G. Lake, we've been waiting for someone to come and give us our next assignment. Wow. 80 years. Go one step further. Bobby Connor was in Moravian Falls and had an encounter with the, with the angels who were, who were active during the Moravian Revival. That would have been in the 1700s. And Bobby's having an encounter out on his porch where a ton of angels showed up dressed in, in um, pilgrim attire, the same as they would for the Moravians in the 1700s. And he says they, they just were elated, but one of them spun around to Bobby and said the very same thing. Ever since the time of the Moravians, we've been waiting for someone to come and bring us an assignment from the Lord. What does that say? that angels of the living God are subject to the work of man on the earth. And they're looking for a place to be put to work and working for assignment. Now, that doesn't mean that you can go boss them around and have them do frivolous things. I mean, don't, don't go bossing any angels. I'll just tell you that right away. 
probably wouldn't be a good day for you, you know. But just the same, don't ignore them. We need to step into a realm of cooperation because if it was true that, that, that um, in Randy Clark's meeting when they invited the angelic realm into the room that healings began to multiply in a greater measure than they'd ever known. If it was true in, in healing revivalists like, like um, um, William Branham to have a direct cooperation with the angelic realm during these great healing crusades, then what would it look like for us in Ogden, Utah and in, in God's Place Church to just simply come into a place where we say angels of the living God be a part of our lives every single day. Angels of the living God, we welcome you into this place to come and to do the work and the bidding of the Lord. Would you come and be broadcasters of God's goodness, grace, and love throughout our city? I know for a fact that there are many people who end up in church not because of an invitation of a, of a human living being but because of an invitation of an angel. I know for a fact that people have encounters with angels on a daily basis, and those angels direct them. We had a young man that came into our church in Salt Lake City who had been given direction supernaturally to come to our church, and I, I guarantee you it was angels broadcasting and, and doing the advertising for our church because he's in a park, and all the next thing you know, the Lord says through an angel to go up to this place and, and, and come, and he comes in and he gets saved. Went through a radical encounter, and, and I know that there are angels that do that work and do that bidding. What would it look like if we released an angelic realm to over the top of our city to invade the night season of our, of our city? To, to, to literally go into the darkest regions of our city where crime is the worst and where gang activity is the worst, and we release the angels of the living God to go in to intervene on our behalf. What would it look like in the dream life of individuals if we prayed that angels of the living God would be released into the dreams of the people? That they would go and they would minister to those who have been crying out, those who are suicidal, those who are ready to end it all. And a ministering spirit of God's love and his mercy comes and shows up to say, fear not, for the Lord is with you. Does any of this freak you out or does it excite you? Okay. It's a, it's a holy invitation to say there's more. And it's, it's, it's not an invitation to start worshiping angels. A again, as I said in Revelation chapters 19 and both 22 as well, if you look through the account, we won't go there, but, 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 but it, it, it says that John the Revelator, when he came into an encounter with the angel, he immediately fell down onto the Lord, fell down on his face and began worshiping the angel. And the angel of the Lord just stopped him carte blanche on both occasions and said, no, 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 you don't understand. Don't do that. I'm just a fellow servant just like you are, is what he says to him. We're the same. We're both serving the one who's worth everything. Turn your heart and turn your attention back toward God. And so you don't need to worry about that. You just just in, invite. It, it, it's, it's just a, a real powerful element of inviting heaven to come to earth when we invite all of heaven's hosts with us. Heaven looks, heaven looks like angels. So if heaven's going to come to earth, why don't we have a lot of angels being released over the earth to do the, the bidding, bidding and the will of the Lord? Does that make sense to you? It, it really is it, seriously on my heart because I believe it's a missing dynamic in most of our lives because we, and, and here's what you can pray. Just simply pray that the Lord would give you eyes to see and ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. And or physical encounters. I, I don't have like a, a real powerful seer's gift in my own life. I've, I've only seen angels a couple of times with my natural eye or spiritual eye as it were, but I've sensed their presence and felt them around me continually for years and years and years. And, and, um, I will tell you this, that whenever your life steps out of agreement with, with what you need to be doing and you step into places that are not healthy, angels, they exit the stage. They, 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 it's not like they're not going to be available to, for protection, but, but they don't like to be around you when you're in, in behavior that's, that's uh, dishonoring to the king. The Holy Spirit's still at work, but angels, they say, uh, uh, that's not going to work very well for you. Why don't you call me when you get your life in order? So it's not a hard, fast rule, but I've, I've noticed it in my own life when I've been disobedient and walked out of the will of God that the, the presence of the angelic realm has, has dissipated from my life. So it's, a, it's not hard, fast. I'm just saying that's the rule that I've experienced and talked to a lot of others about it as well. But you can be sure that if you just lean into heaven and ask for the angelic realm to come to be your guide and be your help, they will. They're going to come and support the work of your hands. And so what we need to begin doing is beginning to declare and to decree I, I, I've never felt comfortable just bossing angels around, but I begin to declare the goodness of God and the will of God over cities and over, over, over my life. And if there's a circumstance or situation in your family that needs to be changed, you could, you could declare and say, I decree that the angels of the living God would come and minister to this situation in my family. 
I declare that the angels of the living God would come and minister from the heights and come and dispel the places of high, high places of wickedness and darkness in the region because we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. We wrestle against principalities and powers. Uh, let me read that real quick because it's really, really important and I don't want to go too fast. So, Yeah, it, it's, it's found in Ephesians chapter 6. You're very familiar with the passage. It says, finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers. Our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but it's against rulers, against authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against spiritual forces of evil in heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may stand and stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith which is with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert. Always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Pray also for me that whenever I speak, words may be given me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. And so it, it really brings into to, to a place of, of understanding that we're not wrestling against flesh and blood, but we are wrestling against those powers, authorities, forces of evil in dark places. And so as we step into our place as rightful heirs of the son of the king of God, we can step into a place where we can declare and decree in the spiritual realm that the Lord himself would send his ambassadors, him emissaries, his authorities to go and displace those places of darkness. You don't need to wrestle anything in your own flesh and blood or in your own strength. Call on the name of the Lord and you'll be saved. Call on his righteousness, call on his goodness, call on his greatness, call on the angels of the Lord to come and move. There are authorities that have been given, rulers and authorities that have been given over regions of the earth and it is God's power that will displace those. But we need to come into a place where we're declaring a decree that heaven would come and put those angels to work. You want to see Utah change and you want to see the environment of the culture shift, put the angels of the living God at work. Begin to declare and decree the goodness of the Lord over the region. Stand with me. Oh. Everybody okay? Okay, a couple of things before we end up. Number one, um, don't, don't take for granted what you just received here today in terms of everything that God's doing in the Spirit. In other words, don't, don't just say, man, that was good, but I've got work tomorrow. No, carry this environment with you into work tomorrow. <laughs> you, can, you can carry God's love and his goodness, and you can change atmospheres and environments everywhere you go. Just, just begin to rely heavily upon what God poured out in his spirit today and welcome that into your life. Here's a good experiment that you can have tonight, honestly, before you put your head on your pillow. How many right now have been struggling with, with, with um, problems in your night season that are being tormented? You're literally being tormented by evil things and evil spirits in the night. Raise your hand so I can see you. Okay, here's a really, really good activity that you can, you can cause, you can have it in today, okay? And, and we'll, we'll pray it today, but tonight, particularly before you go to bed, when you lay your head on your pillow, just say, angels of the living God, come and surround me and protect me from everything that would be evil. We, we, we reject every spirit except for the Holy Spirit. I reject every spirit except for the Holy Spirit. And I declare that my night season will be governed by the Holy Spirit, not by demonic spirits. And we, we declare that there will be an end to night frights and nightmares. And the, the, um, the ability for the enemy to just begin to, to harass you, harassing spirits are just going to end today. Because God is with you and his angels are with you. When our kids walked into to growing up in, in their younger years, we had a lot of demonic activity that hit our house when we hit Utah. We didn't know anything about spiritual warfare. And our kids kept coming down into our room. And trust me, I mean, they, they were very, very shielded. They didn't have anything in terms of, of uh, you know, television or movies or any of that that was opening up doors, none of that. And so they began to come down and describe things that were happening in their bedroom at night, and we knew to pay attention very closely because they were describing real demons that were coming to harass them in the middle of the night. And so we knew that we were going to have to teach them because we couldn't be with them every moment of every day. 
And how many of you know when a bully gets a hold of a little kid that he'll bully him into saying that if you tell, I'm going to kill your parents? And so they live silently many times with that harassment for year after year after year, thinking that if they ever said anything, just like a, like a, 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 a bully or a, a, you know, a pedophile or anything like that, if you tell anybody, we're just going to kill your parents. It's going to cost you everything. And that's the way the devil plays. That's his tactic. And so we knew that we would have to teach our kids to do warfare on their own, fight, on their own turf. And so we got up there and, and um, we just simply prayed that prayer. Angels of the living God, post yourself north, south, east, and west over this whole house. Post yourself in our kids' bedroom and ward off anything that would want to come in this room to attack them. And all of that activity ended very, very, very quickly. It ended that night for many of them. There was a, one instance, I think, where it came back a couple of times in, with some of our kids, but it ended because we taught our kids that you have power and you have authority in the name of Jesus Christ. You are powerful in Jesus Christ. So you plead the blood of Jesus Christ over your life and ask for God's help, and it'll end. And so I declare that over you today. Anyone that's going through that tonight, it, it ends. It ends today. You're going to have the best peace and the best rest you've ever had in your life because of the grace and the blood of Jesus Christ that covers and protects you. And so we declare that over you. His, his blood, his mercy, his grace, but we also release the angels of the living God over you to protect you in your home. Yeah. And then what we ask for, Heavenly Father, is that you'd let us come into agreement with what you're doing on the earth and to know, just like we prayed over Ashley, the, the, the anointing that rested on the sons of Iskar, would you give us wisdom to know what's going on? Would you give us wisdom to know the times and the seasons? Would you give us wisdom to know how to pray and know what we ought to pray? And would you let us cooperate with heaven's help to see what you want done on the earth done? And so we declare that the angels of the living God over God's place and the assignment that they have over this place, there are literally are angels that have been assigned to this place. They have an assignment for us and for the, 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 the vision of this house and for the vision of our region. And so we just say, welcome angels of the living God. Come on, would you welcome them and just say, welcome angels of the living God. You're welcome in this place. We welcome you to come and to do the work of the Lord. And we welcome you to come and to help us. We need your help. We need lots and lots and lots of help. And so we're, we're just saying thank you, Lord, that you, you, you saw fit to give us what we need. And we, so we release the Holy Spirit. We release all of the, the workers of heaven to come that we would see what you want to do on the earth accomplished. And we say all that in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 God bless you guys. Yeah, he's good. All right, our prayer team is going to come. If you'd like further prayer, um, we'd love for you to get prayer. We love you and bless you guys. Um, hang out if you can. Get to know some more people if you're new. And uh, make sure you, you get a hold of somebody and introduce yourself. And just, just welcome, you, welcome them here. So bless you guys. We love you.